This video is sponsored by Ground News. During the early hours of December 7th, 1941, the crew of USS Nevada, one of the two colossal Nevada-class battleships from the U.S. Navy, was playing morning colors. Soon, dozens of Japanese aircraft poured down from the sky and began bombing Pearl Harbor with devastating effects. Nevada, the only ship that was not moored, immediately began to maneuver to get out of harm's way and counterattack. As the crew began to fend off the enemy fighters with accurate anti-aircraft fire, several bombs and one torpedo hit her. Despite the critical flooding and the subsequent fires, Nevada and her crew kept fighting back until the ship was beached and began to sink. It appeared as though USS Nevada was lost forever, but she became the only ship damaged at Pearl Harbor to rise again and be able to seek revenge on her enemies. We at Dark Seas love our sponsor, Ground News, a company led by a NASA engineer on a mission to inform the world and help individuals think freely and without bias. Ground News is a news comparison website and app that allows for a data-driven analysis of the latest breaking news stories around the globe. Reading about China and U.S. interactions is often confusing, but Ground News makes it easier to separate fact from fiction. Take this story, for example, about a stray U.S. Navy destroyer sailing near disputed islands. By looking it up on Ground News, you can see that apart from leaning to the right, most sources covering the event are foreign and not American-based. Spot media bias on your media consumption and be informed of all sides of the story by visiting ground.news darkseas or clicking the link in the description below. That's ground.news slash darkseas. USS Nevada Deeply concerned about Japan's expansion in the Pacific, the Navy knew that an eventual clash between both powers was inevitable, which led to the creation of the Nevada-class battleships. USS Nevada was the first of a class of two 27,500-ton battleships alongside her sister ship, USS Oklahoma. Both battleships would be the first to adopt the all-or-nothing naval warship armor principle, which involved armoring the most essential parts of a ship while leaving other areas with little to no armor at all. Optimizing armor this way would prove essential for long-range engagements during sea battles in World War I. The ship's construction was authorized by the U.S. Congress in 1911, and the contract was awarded to Four River Shipbuilding Company for an estimated $5.7 million without armament or armor. Nevada's keel was laid down on November 4, 1912, and the ship was launched on July 11, 1914. Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels and Assistant Secretary of the Navy Franklin D. Roosevelt attended the launch. At the time of her commission in March of 1916, USS Nevada rendered most American battleships obsolete, and she impressed the population with her sheer size and weight. Nevada's 27,500 tons dwarfed the weight of the pre-dreadnought Oregon by three times and was twice as heavy as Delaware, the first American dreadnought completed in 1910. In addition, she was 583 feet long and had a beam of 95 feet and a draft of over 28 feet. Nevada was also the first U.S. Navy ship to have a single funnel, an oil-fired steam power plant instead of a coal-fired plant, geared turbines, and most importantly, massive triple-gun turrets. What's more, during trials, the battleship was able to achieve a top speed of over 24.6 miles per hour and could carry up to 2,000 tons of fuel. When the U.S. finally joined the conflict in April of 1917, USS Nevada and her crew of almost a thousand men were more than ready for combat. World War I After the first American coal-fired battleships departed the U.S. to join the British Grand Fleet in November of 1917, Nevada had to wait for almost a year to join the rest of the fleet. In fact, she was the last American ship to join the war in Europe. Under the command of Captain Andrew T. Long, the colossal battleship and her sister ship, Oklahoma, arrived in Bearhaven, Ireland, to join Battleship Division 6. From then on, both Nevada-class battleships escorted convoys bound for the British Isles to make sure that no German vessel or U-boat could harm them. Unfortunately for Nevada's eager crew, the ship saw no action during the war. 
Instead, she was one of the ships that escorted President Wilson's liner George Washington to Brest, France, for the Paris Conference. Following the end of the war, Nevada served in the Atlantic and the Pacific, where she surveyed American possessions in the Philippines and witnessed the rapid expansion of the Empire of the Rising Sun. Then, in 1930, the battleship underwent several modifications. Her basket masts were changed for tripod masts, and her steam turbines were exchanged for geared turbines for an increased range. Her main guns were also elevated, and eight anti-aircraft guns were added, alongside two catapults for aircraft. Pearl Harbor During the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Nevada was the only vessel that was not moored on Ford Island. The battleship quickly maneuvered while the crew assumed battle stations, and as chaos consumed the ambience and the skies were filled with the cacophony of war, the sailors took to their anti-aircraft guns to fend off the waves of upcoming Japanese fighters and Kate torpedo bombers. The gunners fired with desperation, focusing their fire on any moving object approaching. But as Nevada slowly left the hot zone, a torpedo hit her above the keel. Officer of the deck, Ensign Joe Tossig, and the damage control crew were able to control the flooding caused by the impact, but the fight was not over yet. As USS Nevada left the harbor and left behind a trail of smoke and fire, the second wave of Japanese Val dive bombers went straight for her. With the support of several fighters, the Japanese intended to sink the ship and block the channel. Meanwhile, Nevada steamed past the 1010 dock, pouring anti-aircraft rounds in all directions. However, five bombs suddenly struck the ship, leading to several fires and holes in her upper and main decks. As the gasoline fires expanded, they prevented the damage control teams from stopping the flooding. Tossing and the remaining survivors then led Nevada to Ford Island and beached her near Hospital Point to avoid being sunk in deep waters. Operations Neptune and Dragoon after heroic salvage work, Nevada was miraculously refloated and overhauled to get back into action. The upgrades were completed in October of 1942. The battleship was fitted with 16 Mark 12 guns in twin mounts, several torpedo tubes, more than 60 Beaufort and Ehrlichan guns, and no less than 30 guns of different calibers for use against ground and air targets. Nevada then went on to support the capture of Attu in Alaska in May of 1943 and participated in Atlantic convoys before heading to the United Kingdom to prepare for Operation Neptune, the invasion of Normandy. During D-Day on June 6, 1944, USS Nevada provided naval artillery support to Army Rangers assaulting German shore defenses. The ship and her crew were praised for their accurate fire, which was critical in destroying German bunkers, trenches, and battery positions. Following several operations in northern France, Nevada was also chosen to participate in Operation Dragoon, the amphibious landings at Toulon in southern France. From August 15th to September 25th, USS Nevada made use of all her artillery to destroy German garrisons across the coastline and help the advance of Allied troops. Eventually, Nevada had a rough encounter with Big Willie, a reinforced enemy fortress with dangerous 13 4-inch turrets that had a range of over 19 nautical miles. After weeks of intense shelling, Nevada dealt the final blow on September 23rd. War in the Pacific After her service on the Western Front, Nevada went back to the U.S. to be upgraded with Mark 8 guns. Shortly afterward, the crew was sent to the Pacific to support the landings at the volcanic island of Iwo Jima. Between February 16th and March 7th of 1945, she became one of many Navy vessels that heavily pummeled the island to soften up the Japanese defenses before the Marines landed. When hell broke loose between both forces, Nevada moved as close as 600 yards off the shore to provide fire support for the Marines fighting the entrenched Japanese opposition. After conquering the impenetrable Mount Suribachi and the entire island, there was still no rest for Nevada's crew, as they were immediately called to serve at Okinawa on Japanese home soil. Nevada then joined the task force on March 24th to begin the preliminary bombardment of Okinawa and bombed enemy airfields, supply depots, shore defenses, and every possible target. Then, on the morning of March 25th, seven kamikazes appeared out of nowhere and headed straight for the battleship. They were all shot down, except for one that crashed into the main deck, causing severe damage and several casualties. 
Nevada would operate off the coasts of Okinawa until the island was completely secured in August of 1945. Sunk at last. Nevada was considered obsolete after the war and was subsequently decommissioned. The vessel was then assigned as a target ship and was used during the Bikini Atoll atomic experiments in July of 1946. One atomic bomb detonated near Nevada, but she remained afloat, although extremely radioactive. She was then towed to Pearl Harbor and later used as a practice gunnery target about 65 miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. After multiple tests, the vessel was finally sunk by an air torpedo on July 31, 1948. However, USS Nevada rose to the occasion once again after she was found in May of 2020, about 65 miles southwest of Hawaii, by a team of maritime archaeologists. Dr. James Delgado, the mission's lead archaeologist and senior vice president of SEARCH, the largest underwater and terrestrial archaeology firm in the U.S., said in a statement, quote, Nevada is an iconic ship that speaks to American resilience and stubbornness. The physical reality of the ship, resting in the darkness of the great museum of the sea, reminds us not only of past events, but also of those who took up the challenge of defending the United States in two global wars. This is why we do ocean exploration, to seek out these powerful connections to the past. Search had partnered with marine robotics company Ocean Infinity with the specific objective of locating the remains of Nevada. The joint team used an AUV, or Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, that surveyed the area of over 100 square miles in the Pacific. USS Nevada's legacy remains untarnished, as retired Rear Admiral Samuel Cox, director of the Naval History and Heritage Command, put it, quote, USS Nevada has a proud place in the Navy's history. It serves as a reminder that our sailors have a long, terrific tradition. Her fighting spirit proves the US Navy remains tough in difficult times. When the circumstances appear to be at their worst, our Navy remains at their best. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Also, let us know what you think of the USS Nevada's impressive war service and its recovery 72 years later. Stay tuned.